Coming up on Studio G, the Colorado student that died in the mass shooting is being honored as a hero. Plus, we sit down with an award-winning UNLV filmmaker. And it's that time of the semester, finals are upon us, what UNLV students are doing to blow off some steam. Stick around, Studio G starts right now. Thanks for joining us for our last episode of Studio G. I'm Carla Lopez. And I'm Jennifer Meza. Friends and family, classmates, and others gather Wednesday night to remember the Colorado student who sacrificed his own life to save others during the mass school shooting. CNN's Scott McClan reports. Hundreds gathering at the STEM school Highlands Ranch outside Denver, Colorado, honoring 18-year-old Kendrick Castillo, who's being called a hero. Kendrick immediately jumping into action when two shooters entered his school, without hesitating, rushing a gunman, sacrificing his life to save his classmates. Eight others were wounded, but authorities say Kendrick stopped the attack from being much worse, giving other students enough time to tackle and disarm one shooter. Kendrick's parents not surprised by their son's actions. The mother of one student says her daughter witnessed Kendrick's heroic sacrifice. She says she's indebted to him. We apologize for the audio issues that we've had in this last story, but switching the years now, finals are a stressful time and all the tests, papers, and assignments can get to be too much. Some UNLV students are using PLUR to take a break from the academic decathlon and prepare for the EDM event of the year, EDC. Nat Nick, Nick Sedbrook has more. Las Vegas is known for its vast amount of entertainment opportunities, but what may not be common knowledge is how the Oasis is also a player paradise. To clarify, player means peace, love, unity, and respect. It is a term used most often by ravers. While most people know of EDC as a big Las Vegas EDM event, there are so many other raves that take place in this electric city. Friday, the Hard Rock Cafe on the Strip converted their third floor into a venue for the DJ Midnight Tyrannosaurus' Mutation Tour. If you like dancing all night and don't mind being in close proximity with a welcoming community, then this was the spot for you. The cramped arena was bouncing with bass all night. You feel the entire experience. It's not just going to a concert and listening to the music. Like you're there, you're feeling the bass hit you, you're vibing with the crowd. This dubstep heavy event was a place for headbangers to unite and get out all their excess anger. While it may look like the people here are full of rage, they are actually making connections that can last them a lifetime. The connections you make with the people that you uh, flirt with can be worldwide. It's really cool because you can network with them and like meet up with them later on in future raves and you just kind of create like a rave family. The great thing about electronic DJs is that they're constantly remixing other genres of music. So you can hear pop, rock, rap, basically anything at this event. And you don't have to worry about anyone judging your dancing either. The EDM scene is very welcoming and open. It's full of positivity and confidence. This attendee says he loves the vibe of EDM. My favorite part of rape culture is basically going out, listening to the music you love, and being free and doing whatever the hell you want, and just feeling confident. Thanks for yourselves one time. Thanks, man. Peace, get home safe. Studio G. This was Nick Sedbrook. That makes me super excited for EDC next week, especially since I've been too busy with finals to even take a break. Are you looking to adopt a furry friend? Reporter Alex Whipple visit a kitten foster mom to discuss her experience with fostering, adopting, and volunteering at a local animal shelter. 
Ashley DeAndrea's love for cats inspired her to volunteer at local animal shelters. I currently volunteer for Animal Foundation and for Hearts Alive Village. I kind of got involved because I realized that I would say dog volunteers, cat volunteers is probably 10 to 1. There's a huge focus in the city on stray dogs, homeless dogs, shelter dogs. Cats are kind of the underserved animals of the community, I guess you could say. DeAndrea's goal is to provide felines with a better home and better life. I have been volunteering there for six years now, and I do the photography for the adoption website. I also work to help socialize some of the scared, more timid uh, cats that come in, those that are not deemed most adoptable at first. I work with them. And I also do a lot of promotion on my own. I have created an Instagram and a Facebook page that helps to network the adoptable cats of Animal Foundation, as well as their paw partners. The animals themselves prompted DeAndrea to begin volunteering at the Animal Foundation and their paw partners. I was looking for something to do after losing one of my cats uh, very tragically after eight years. Mm -hmm. And I decided I was going to go sign up to volunteer and that's when I started learning more and realizing just how underserved they are in the community. So they kind of over six years have become my entire, my almost my entire world. Hundreds of felines are up for adoption at local animal shelters and are ready to go home. Cats are $25, kittens are $50 through Animal Foundation. That includes their spay neuter their microchip, their snap test for FELV, FIV, and first and second vaccines. DeAndrea encourages those who cannot adopt a cat or kitten to volunteer their time and donate supplies to local animal shelters. And if you can't adopt, if you're not in a position to adopt right now, they are in desperate need of fosters, also volunteers to come down and socialize the cats and just work with them, get them ready for their next step in their forever homes. The need is never ending. Supplies, time, love, it's all, it's all welcomed at the shelter. All of the kittens in the litter DeAndrea is currently fostering have been adopted. However, their mom, Princess Leia, has yet to find a forever home. So the mama of this litter is still up for adoption. She is going to be adopted through Hearts Alive Village, a paw partner of the Animal Foundation and she will be ready for adoption on May 20th. So make sure you go to their website and look at Mama's pictures. Hi! I'm Alex Whipple for Studio G. Ah, I'm allergic to cats, but those kittens are cute. And if you're not allergic to cats, their mom, Per Princess Leah, is looking for her forever home. If you or anyone knows somebody that's interested in this sweet cat, visit www.haviv.com and click on the adoption and search for Princess Leah. Coming up after the break, Nick Sedberg will show us what the weekend weather will look like. It's finally starting to feel like summer in Las Vegas. That means the season of farmers markets. So Vanessa McConnell visits the Strawberry Festival. The Strawberry Festival hosted at the Las Vegas Farmers Market was a sweet success. With over eight locations around the valley, the Las Vegas Farmers Market hosted the Strawberry Fest this month at its Summerlin location. The overall mission of the Las Vegas Farmers Market is to encourage people to support local small businesses and farmers by buying from them and even growing for themselves. The cost is always free and there is guaranteed to be plenty of produce, crafts, and free supplies for the entire family to enjoy. So today it's all about Strawberry Festival. It's games with the kids. We're going to have all different types of uh, games. I'm not sure exactly what all those games are like, but there's prizes available for the winners. Um, then we got a DJ coming, uh, bounce houses, um, a lot of fun stuff. Um, we've been here for many, many years. We're here at Gardens Park, right here at uh, Town Center Road, 215 area. Pets are also welcome at all their outdoor locations. There's many vendors that cater to your canine needs, as well as seasonings for those who like to take the produce home and explore with their own taste buds. It's a wonderful feeling being a part of the farmer's market because it's a family atmosphere. And when you come to farmer's markets, you get all authentic stuff and genuine 
one of a kind and um, things that you can have made up that will bring life to your home, to your family, and to other family members too as well. So these are seasonings with no salt and no sugars. One is your offer for seasoning rub, known as your carne asada. Great, great, great seasoning. It has your lemon pepper garden base to it. And you can put this on your poultry, your turkey, your chicken, your pork. And um, Thanksgiving and December is your number one top seller for your turkey and your turkey dressing. Next we have your black and rosemary, great for your salmon, great for your steaks, great for your chicken, and great for your red skin potatoes. Put these on anything and great on popcorn as well. If you're living in the salt out your life, no salt, no sugars, it's the taste to have your soul. Thank you for more. Rob and his wife Kat has taken over the farmer's market for some time now, and it has been their mission since to bring the best produce to our valley and help other businesses grow throughout their process. I've actually been farming my whole life. I'm a third generation farmer. I am from Reedley, California. I do bring it in fresh every week like I did today. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, Gary Elric, started before me. Um, we've been farming together, we've been partners in the produce industry for many, many years. He got uh, fairly sick, and that's where we chose to, where I would take over the marketing in Las Vegas, and uh, he would do the farming. So that's kind of the agreement that we have. Um, I started coming here as a vendor from Ron's Produce Market back in 2012. Um, about three years ago, I purchased Las Vegas Farmers Market and took over the marketing. Um, and we've just been running guns and roses ever since. The most amazing thing about the farmer's market is that they give opportunities to organizations like Transition Services that help people with disabilities expand their creative minds and crafts by offering them to the community for purchase as well. Hello, my name is Javier from Transition Services in D.C. here is to about people with disabilities. We provide jobs and employment with people with disabilities. Everything in here is made of people with disabilities. Please come see us at Palmer's Market at Garden Drive, Garden Park, and Town Center. We are located 6100 West Cheyenne Avenue. We'll give you a free tour. Thank you. For those that missed this week's Strawberry Festival, there are other opportunities to get in on all the sweet action. Um, yeah, we actually do have another Strawberry Festival that we're going to be doing out at Floyd Lamb Park. It's going to be next Saturday. Uh, that's at 10 to 2 in the morning at Floyd Lamb Park, Tule Springs. A little bit uh, north of town, 95 north, get up on Durango. Strawberry Festival. So same type of an idea, bounce houses, live music. It's going to be a lot of fun. So now you guys have it here at the Strawberry Festival at the Las Vegas Farmers Market for Studio G. I'm Vanessa McConnell. Coming up after the break, in case you want to visit a farmer's market this weekend, Nick Setbrook will give us our weekend weather forecast. The name of my show is Shenanigans on the Radio and Praise and Shenanigans on the Radio. Well, both shows are music talk shows. Uh, I bring people in from the community who anybody's doing anything positive, local talent, uh, independent artists. I want the listeners to take away anything that may be helpful to them. Both shows are inspirational. No matter what you do in life, no matter what your dream is, follow it. Never give up on it. My name is Lucius Thompson, a.k.a. The New Bee. I host shows called Praise and Shenanigans on the Radio every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and Shenanigans on the Radio every Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. Make sure you tune in on the rebelhd2.com. The name of my show is The Rock Rebellion. I feature rock music from classic rock to alternative rock to soft rock to everything in between. I'm learning every day about different bands and I like to share that knowledge with you, my listeners. My name is Rockin' Gemini and my show is called The Rock Rebellion on the Rebel HD2. You can catch my show every Saturday night from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. It's been a wild week so far. Nick Setbrook is here with your weekend outlook on weather. Nick, when will I be able to wash my car finally without it being ruined? You're probably going to have to wait till next week to wash your car. It's been um, pretty crazy. Today, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that crazy, 
but right now because right now it's like sunny there's only a little bit of clouds in the sky we're sitting about uh the high 60s at 69 um the high today is going to get 79 but don't let that fool you um and tonight it'll be at a low 59 but there are there's a flash flood warning in the las vegas area so yeah we'll see yeah um if yes. we could just like uh, make sure that we look out for the weather and just keep an eye on the sky. So let's take a look at the valley right now. Um, most of the valley is sitting at uh, the high 60s, um, 68, and then it's weird. Actually, in the south, we're um, at a, the lower, which is kind of weird for um, Las Vegas. It's going to be 63 in Boulder City, which usually it's lower up in the north um, northwest. So now we'll take a look at the week. Um, like I said, today it's going to be mostly rainy. We have a 50% chance of showers, and tonight it moves all the way up to a 70% chance of showers. Um, so it's probably going to rain. It's going to be scattered around the valley. Uh, it's going to be at a low 59. And we sit at um, high, well, mid to high 70s until Sunday um, when it is finally going to we're going to get some sun. So you can wash your car um, starting Monday, Jen. I would wait till then. Um, yeah, but it might rain every other day, so I would wait. And then today at UNLV, um, we have a 40% humidity, which is so weird for Las Vegas. It's usually like 10 to 20. So, you know, maybe you don't have to <laughs> um, moisturize today. You could be just good um, with that. And then the UV index, which like I've said before, um, is the sun's harmful rays coming down on you. A low is two, and so we can thank the weather um, actually for that. We won't get sunburned like we usually do, and we don't have to put on a bunch of sunblock. Not too much um, wind either in the valley. It's at nine miles per hour, and it's coming from the east northeast. Tonight, um, it's, we're gonna have a high 59. Like I said, there's chance of showers, but it's a 70% chance. So yeah, just have an umbrella, have a rain jacket, um, and there's a flash flood warning. So be prepared. If you're really skinny, don't get washed away. Um, and there's some light wind tonight, and so it won't be that bad. This picture actually comes from my home state of Colorado. So we can be lucky that we're not in the desert right now. I mean that we're not in the mountains right now because they're still getting snow in the, at the beginning of May. This picture was from April 30th, um, but it actually snowed yesterday. And then finally, I'll take y'all to a quote from Mother Monster, Lady Gaga. So put your paws up, everyone. Um, it says, fight, fight and push harder for what you believe in. You'd be surprised. You're much stronger than you think. And that just really goes with um, all the things happening lately in the news. Um, we really need to just really believe in ourselves and believe in the people around us that have good hearts. And so now I just want to leave you guys with some video coming out of Hawaii. This is a satellite time lapse of clouds forming around all of Hawaii's land, but its, high, but its highest peaks. Very cool. Back to you at the desk, Jen. Before we go to break, here's a sneak peek at the film that sweeps second place at UNLV Spring Flicks. And after the break, we'll sit down with the film's director. Personally, I love KUMV. It is my sanctuary for creativity. I be, I'm given an opportunity to come in and use the resources that we have here to create the shows and the broadcasts that we do. It is my favorite creative space to be in. 
I feel like the station gives students a platform to actually play music and actually a chance to get their hands in the radio industry without having to spend that money. I like KMV. Um, it's a community station. Uh, they opened up the doors to myself, uh, also to other people who, who have a dream of, of being in radio or, or whatever the case may be. Have that energy from the city coming back to you while you're on a live broadcast. There's nothing like that feeling. They have producing um, workshops. I got, I learned how to actually do play-by-plays for sports events. KNOV has done a lot for me as a student. If you want to do a talk show, a specialty show, music, it doesn't matter. There's a place for you to be able to come and give your voice to our community. <laughs> Welcome back to Studio G. We're joined by the director of We Want Fish, George Menchikov. It's I Want Fish. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about um, this film. Before we went on break, I know that we saw a little bit of We Want Fish. Um, I Want Fish, right? There you go. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the film is about? Um, yeah, so I Want Fish is kind of like a super deadpan, super simple, like dry story about these two Russian guys. Um, one of them, Gorbachev, he wants fish, and he has a broken leg, so his friend Dimitri has to go get him fish, and uh, adventures ensue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I tell any more, it spoils everything. <laughs> so that, that's how you're getting us, yeah. a sneak peek from you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I understand that both you and the film received a lot of awards. What did you all receive? Um, so when, when I Want Fish started getting award, awarded, I guess, like on stage, um, it was super surreal because I wasn't expecting it to do so well. Um, well, I mean, I knew we did good, but like, as good as it was. Um, originally, it started out with uh, Best Sound, which I was, or Runners Up Best Sound, which was super dope. Um, runners Up Editing, which was cool. Runners Up Screenplay, which was a surprise for me. But then the, the coolest part, I think, uh, we got um, Best Supporting Actor and Best uh, Lead Actor, which was like me going on stage going like, what? <laughs> like, whoa! And uh, yeah, then we got, we got uh, audience, audience, award best audience award for day two which was like super cool and then uh we got second place overall that's good yeah. congratulations i'm really happy to Thank hear you. that mm -hmm. so out of all of the awards that you received which one do you think you would say you were the most shocked about um probably sorry definitely the best the best actor awards i think for me because i in a way i almost didn't expect it because i feel like an award like that always goes to the very deep like emotional type roles and I feel like something I feel like something for I Want Fish was just kind of like sweet all right yeah <laughs> dude <laughs> we'll take it yeah dude. <laughs> I was I was super bummed that the actors weren't there to see it but I, I remember just texting him I couldn't call him because his phone's freaking broken but I was texting him like dude you got best actor and the response was Whoa! And just a bunch of letters <laughs> going <"Whoa." laughs> that typical shock response yeah I was just like wait what do you mean I'm like yeah dude <laughs> we did it yeah. um, so tell me a little bit more about the filmmaking progress like from start to finish, how did it come to mind? How did it come to be? Yeah, so um, it was kind of cool. Hmm? That was a serious question. Go on. Oh, okay. yeah. So what happened was like um, I remember watching like a like a little like student film my cinematographer teacher showed me, and it had something to do with like snow being used, and I was kind of like, you know what? Like it's cool that they did snow. Like I want to see what we can do with snow. And on the drive home, I came up <laughs> with the dumbest like premise of a story is just like like just two Russians in a little shack and I'm like I came home wrote it literally like that moment in like 30 minutes and I sent it to everyone was like this is the next thing this is what we're, what we're gonna do and from there it was um what I thought would be like a really small three page like thing we would just film like the next month turned into like a six month process like um just to get the snow we had to like figure that out because there's no tutorial on YouTube on how to do that like we were just all on it like coming up going in blind with me and my friends and we were just like okay so let's maybe we'll film it out in the desert and we'll put like stuff over in post and then it was just like or a green screen and then we ended up just doing what we did and you guys completely accomplished to make something that looks nothing like las vegas you guys filmed mm -hmm. it here and it looks nothing like that and i think that's super cool so um what was the most challenging part would you say about making this vision come to life um you know honestly i think the challenging part was I think overall, like, it started out as a joke in that, like, I wanted to, like, be like, okay, we're doing, we're doing casting calls, we're doing, like, 
like prep. We're doing like a lot of like all this crazy stuff that you usually do for like bigger projects. And I was like, we were going all in on this little thing. And I think um, what made it hard is that like I was juggling just so many things at the same time. Like we were trying to figure out how the snow was going at the same time, trying to organize read throughs, get costuming done, getting production design. And I think initially, even for a little project, it started getting really overwhelming really fast. Um, my friends can uh, vouch for me. <laughs> All the <laughs> crazy texts that be like, dude, I'm dying. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's just, just kind of like, it was a lot to go for, go with all at once. But now, now that we've done it, I feel like I can do it again. It'll be a lot easier. So regardless of um, all of the stress, what was your funniest memory that you think you can get out of this experience? Dude, so, um, so with the fish, right? Um, <laughs> the, we shot the shack portion of the story um, uh, where Dmitry and Gorbachev live in my friend's uh, backyard shack. And uh, what happened was like, uh, for the fish, I needed to keep them cold, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, go, I went to my friend's fridge and I was like, oh, this place looks really cold, like in the freezer. So I put it in there. And uh, later on, like, you know, in like 30 minutes or so, like, I just hear just someone screaming like, like, what the hell? Like, what is this? And I'm like, w w what's up? And my, my roommate, uh, my roommates, uh, or my friend's roommate's a vegan. Uh -huh. And I, it turned out that I put the ice, or I put the fish inside the ice box. Oh, <laughs> no. I had no idea because I didn't know that was the ice box until afterwards. And like, if you looked in the fridge, all the ice just oozed all over like her stuff. And I'm just like, oh. My bad. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that happened. See, so aside from all of the stress, you were able to get out a good memory and a, a laugh out of it, Dude, you know? there was a lot of good memes on this set. People were going, people were going crazy. <laughs> So um, tell people where they can see the film really quick before we go. Um, right now, the film is, we have no confirmed uh, festivals right now that we've submitted for, but uh, hopefully Damn Short Film Fest, hopefully uh, other local film fest, Silver State's another one. Um, we're kind of, we're submitting right now, testing the waters. Until then, the video has to kind of remain private, so sorry. But if you guys hit me up on Instagram, find me. I will send you that private link because I'm down Ooh. to show anyone. There you <laughs> go. Thank you so much for being here in the no studio problem. with us today. I really appreciate it, and I'm sure everybody at home does as well. And after the break, even though we're, even though the Knights are out of the playoffs, that didn't stop some fans from coming together to spread positivity. Plus, we share some of our favorite memories from the semester and send off the graduating class of 2019. Stay with us. KUNV, I feel how I feel about it. It's great. I love it a lot. There's a lot amount of freedom. You can really do basically whatever you want. Very nice facility. Uh, very clean. We have editing booths, st studios for uh, students to practice our craft and to learn more. And KUNV definitely gives us um, insight into what we'll be doing when we get our careers, when, once we graduate. They give us free will and free creativity. I can gain experience to further my career in the radio broadcasting, board operating, to music directing, to even being on air, which is my main goal to do in life. So I can use all that knowledge to put towards my career in radio broadcasting. You will learn so much here at KUMB, and we have a lot to offer. Golden Knight fans created the ultimate watercolor work of art yesterday at T-Mobile Arena. Season ticket holders were invited to quote the ice. Fans, old and young, got to go out on the ice and express their feelings about the season with paint there. Was one rule though, no negativity fans couldn't paint about certain reference or a certain penalty call or a certain team from San Jose. It was all about the positivity. The event gave fans the opportunity to reminisce on their favorite memories of the season and also express gratitude to the Las Vegas Golden Knights. All of this happening just hours before, unfortunately, the San Jose Sharks beat the Colorado Avalanche in a game 7-6-2. It's good to see the Golden Knights still come together, though even after the traumatic season finish. Just like it's hard to believe the Golden Knights season is over, it's also hard to believe graduation is almost upon us. I know, where has the semester gone? 
Yeah, in honor of our last episode of Studio G, we want to leave you with some grad photos of two graduating seniors of this class. You know, <clears throat> taking those pictures was actually a lot of fun. I had a family emergency and I had to leave to my hometown, so I actually got the privilege to take those pictures where I came from, where I was born, and where I lived most of my childhood. So it was great to go back there and just have that experience of this is where I came from, this is where I'm at now, and only, you know, I can decide where I go. <clears throat> and then that's Meredith. I know that she's graduating with two degrees, one in film and one in journalism. And she signed a two-year contract directly in Nightly News uh, for Fox 5, so that's super exciting for her. Wow, that's awesome. The broadcast queen. Well, that's all we have for you guys this last episode of Studio G. Signing off one last time. Thank you all so much for tuning in and joining us all semester. Be sure to tune in and support the new class next semester right here on Studio G.